Hello, we are here for one more lesson of this Axis VM training course. The topic for today will be the settings. Um, just to remember, we've, we, we've been seeing um, these menus in these past, uh, in these two previous lessons. Today we are going to see what is below the settings or what is inside the settings menu. Um, starting with the display options, which is the first entry in this uh, menu. So uh, we open this big dialog box, uh, which we already seen in, in one of the previous lessons. And basically here we control uh, all of these uh, display of all these items, uh, these groups, graphic symbols, local systems, loads, and then also regarding labels on, on, on uh, elements, uh, so properties also, and some switches uh, to, to display uh, several types and several uh, levels of information. Um, we have a lot of different things here, so I will not cover all of them because you can test uh, about these uh, options. Uh, one that is uh, immediately visible, so object contours in 3D, I will activate it, OK, and you see now I have the contour of my beam. So I think it's quite easy and uh, simply controls uh, what we are seeing or not. Then uh, about options, these are things that we already uh, see. So uh, grid and cursor, uh, so we control the grid lines uh, as grid lines or dot grid, so for example like this. Um, let me put again grid lines because I don't like uh, the dot grids. So we have also the spacing, we have uh, control over the snap of the mouse, which snap is uh, the jumps that we can have. In our mouse uh, about editing when we are uh, dealing with geometry so uh, the constraint angle and some tolerances uh, size of the cursor so I think easy stuff also polar, pop, the polar coordinates which is the type of things that uh, appear below so I think it's uh, easy um, some factors for load symbols, uh, this is the size, okay, and basically also uh, options not very complex to understand and to manage. Uh, layer manager, uh, we already uh, talked about also this uh, layer management, so we can control layers and this big dialog box basically manage uh, this information related with layers. I will not repeat what we talk about, but basically, uh, okay, we can create new layers and manage the properties of layers and uh, the visibility or the, the status of the layer. Um, then we have something already seen previously, the stories. Uh, in this particular example, we don't have stories created, so we, we, we have a video uh, only dedicated to the story, so uh, it's the same information. Here we can uh, set uh, what is going on with the stories. Um, guidelines set up um, also something that uh, we did not see the setup but we've seen uh, previously these guidelines. So these are um, uh, some uh, construction or auxiliary lines that we may have in our uh, graphical area. Uh, so what to do? I can create uh, new settings, for example, uh, in point uh, zero zero zero. I can establish a 45 degree angle and do the add and you see that I'm, I'm okay. As I could do, for example, a minus 45 and add and it will create 
perpendicular to the first one. So it's a management to have some setups for the guidelines. Uh, the same for a structural grid, so we can create uh, a new grid in any of, of the working plans, so we can work around this, create some uh, uh, some possibilities around here, create with some different colors, and we've seen already about the structural grids, so uh, I did not, okay, sorry, I did not uh, edit. So uh, we can put, for example, two around here uh, with these guys, okay, and I have something created that I can activate or not. And uh, it is basically the same that we've seen already. Uh, I think it was in the lesson about this icon toolbar. So it is a definition uh, of these structural grids. <coughs> Then more important about design code, so we have a list of all the design codes available uh, in the system. Um, and uh, if we go along the design codes, uh, by default I'm in Eurocode. Um, we have uh, the specific uh, guidelines for each Eurocode and the values that are uh, considered uh, by default. But uh, in this command, we can manage uh, the, the, the information on a level that uh, we, may we may need uh, to calculate some very specific uh, uh, item or element or calculation, and we can change some value in one of the euro codes to something that we want or need, and uh, we can manage this to uh, create that specific or particular calculation, which is, uh, I think, uh, quite interesting to, to, to have this opportunity and uh, so that we are not stick to some rigid uh, parameters and uh, not open that we cannot deal with. Units and formats, um, this is also very interesting because uh, this lets you configure uh, the units uh, either in uh, international system or imperial system. Um, and as you can see, if we go along these different items, we have the specific uh, properties or items that are inside these big groups. We have the units and the, the, the decimal places so we can change whatever we want about this. We have some schemes, okay, I would consider uh, specifically the UE units uh, or the SCU units, so uh, I'm not considering the uh, national country units, but if you live in one of these countries, we can have the opportunity also to have the specific units for uh, this particular case. Uh, gravitation. This gravitation, it's a very simple dialog box and uh, lets you set the, gra the gravitation acceleration constant and the direction of the gravitation as one of the global coordinate directions or a custom direction. By default we have this, uh, this value for the gravitational acceleration, uh, but uh, we can define other directions, okay? for this and specify the value if it is the case, okay? So it's uh, also a very interesting um, open parameter that we can control. Uh, then we have also a very interesting topic uh, called the stiffness reduction. And uh, what can I say about this? Um, in uh, seismic analysis based on response uh, spectrum analysis. Uh, according to the Eurocode, uh, we, we are allowed to use the stiffness reduction factor, uh, factors, uh, it's more than one, based on different uh, architectural element types like columns, beams, walls, slabs, whatever. And we can define those values 
for um, and we can co control the value for each one of these uh, different items so it's also a very interesting possibility to control this um, then we we have uh, the preferences um, this is a big dialog box and uh, we have a lot of parameters we will not see them all in detail for sure uh, otherwise this video will become uh, very long um, but in here we can we can control uh, in each one of these different groups uh, many uh, different parameters like in data integrity uh, the number of files that we can get when we open um, a new a new session uh, we can uh, activate the auto save we can have uh, previous revisions of the model and define the number of revisions that are uh, on the system the undo and the number of undos allowable okay uh, about colors color schemes uh, some control about the OpenGL and uh, graphics acceleration um, graphic symbology so we can have also some symbology and control uh, what is going on okay for all of these types okay we can control this uh, fonts we can define some fonts also for different uh, topics uh, drawing labels information windows dialog windows so we can have this uh, a little bigger or smaller whatever it's uh, the case for each of the users uh, dialog windows uh, also some possibility about the style of uh, the dialogues uh, sizes for the toolbars and sizes of dialog windows and we can set also some some definition about this uh, this configuration specific one display results after loading a model okay we can define uh, what is the behavior of the system um, on on addition uh, some behaviors of the program uh, also uh, to project uh, lines to work plans and we have a lot of these different options one are chosen one uh, others are not so it's uh, these are direct options uh, about the meshing because this is a finite element uh, software so we have a mesh so we can have control about the mesh, especially this topic here, which is addressing a uniform mesh size or adapted mesh size and the default value for uh, the meshes. Definitions about the toolbars. So we can have these flyout toolbars or horizontal toolbars, which is what I have here. Uh, we can have these show obsolete surface elements also. I think it's not important. Um, display in this particular case for uh, these diagrams uh, maybe some some users uh, tend to to go to uh, something that is not the default uh, in this particular case uh, we have it for tension and you can have it for compression resolution for arcs and some definitions also uh, regarding these uh, results and, and diagrams so uh, how to how to have this behavior uh, about the parts um, some definitions also um, uh, on the behavior of the software so uh, display parts are activated but all the parts are turned off then what happens and a couple of similar things load groups uh, defaults um, so what is the behavior also of the software regarding permanent load groups include all in combinations or other behavior variable load groups and a uh, couple more items uh, let me just make a quick note here because some of these things with the examples will be more clear and we'll try to uh, deal a little with uh, as much as possible these different options so that you can see what is the influence of 
these main prohibitors. So it's very long to see item by item, so uh, on the other hand it is important in my perspective for uh, for among you uh, uh, who wants to see more detail about a specific uh, command or option uh, make us uh, a brief contact or, or consult our theoretical course because you have there more explanations about this. Uh, analysis, so uh, what we have defined as uh, maximum virtual memory um, about uh, where to store uh, the files during the analysis and uh, the, the, the core threads to use uh, to make the calculation and especially when we are in presence of uh, very complex or very long calculations. Some definitions about the reports, so report language, okay, what, what is chosen, and the layout that we have for this report, and we can include also a company logo if we want, so we can uh, upload something to, to this field here. And uh, the behavior of the software uh, about the search of program updates and uh, proxy settings if it is the case. Keyboard shortcuts, so uh, we mentioned already about these shortcuts, so we can control uh, shortcuts for the commands we use uh, more, so we have this kind of uh, symbology here, we, so we have the command and we have the, the shortcut in front, so if we go there and simply go backspace and uh, we clean it and now we can give another thing i will not uh, do it because i will lose this uh, thing but if we do something different so we can choose uh, a shortcut i'm choosing something that is already chosen so the program did not accept but it's uh, it's like that the, the process um the language where uh, or the language used by the program okay and the report language used by the software also. Uh, and finally, two commands. The first one, toolbars to the default position. Okay, uh, if it is not the case, I'm not sure if, it, if this will be, okay, not this one. Uh, display boxes to default position. Let me see if it will act, not this one. Okay, did not, uh, did not deal with these ones, but uh, if you have other things inside, then you'll have them in the correct position. Uh, so basically, these were uh, the topics uh, for this lesson, uh, the settings. I hope uh, the ideas and the examples were clear enough to pass you some additional information to the ones that you have already. Um, as I mentioned, it is important to see these smaller details inside of each of these items. Uh, I think it is important for you to consult our theoretical course. And uh, besides this, you have always our support if you send us uh, a contact, uh, being uh, an email or uh, a comment in this uh, video uh, in YouTube. So uh, I hope you can enjoy these information and uh, any help, uh, we, we are here to give you all, all the help you may need.